smelling the excellence of Rosewood in the 242, wondering what that is a privileged opportunity or is open for all? Pause. Think about it with intentional thought and consider where we go from here. Stay tuned and hear what John Cox got to say about how smelling excellence is for, available for all. Join our co-sponsors, Page Investment and Dom Dev, and our friends at Something to Think About with Dale Happy Knows. Share, 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 and let all your friends know that we're here this evening live in living color. And we'll be right back after this message. Something to think about with Dale Happy Knows. Welcome to Something to Think About with Dale Happy Knows. We believe what we think, we become. What we radiate, we attract. And we imagine we surely can achieve. Let's change the narrative 242. So this evening we have a special honored guest. One of my big, 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 big brothers. You know, those that we go back from way back life in life. And so he's here today to share with us his, his um, conceptions as to what should happen, is happening, and why we will become the great Bahamas that we are. Welcome, John Goss. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You are welcome. You are welcome. Now, I'm having a little difficulty with my mic because it doesn't want to stand still. Somebody's trying to grab it and run away with it. But I, I think we'll get you with that. So what I want to say here is that in your bio, you use a number of creative words, big words, words that are not looking backwards but looking forward imaginary independence collateral so the uh, what happened i said french friend friend future imagination artistry uh cultural activism so um sovereignty now they are powerful 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 words um why those words because your bio to me is totally different from what i've ever seen anybody else put in the bio Right. I don't know. I didn't, I don't know if I wrote that bio, um, <laughs> which is probably the, why there's so many fancy words in it, because I'm, I'm a pretty simple, pretty simple person, but um, I don't know, happy. I think that, um, you know, that I, I think that we don't want to, we, I, I, I don't like to operate from a space of, um, of caution. I think we need to be mm -hmm. risk takers, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we need to always be on the edge. Um, ourselves and we need to put ourselves in the right type of discomfort to to, to always be you know uh, seeking um, some kind of solution so if you if you play it safe uh, you know you play it safe as like playing it mediocre right so um, right. I don't think anything ever anything ever changed from a mediocre posture so um even as it comes to you know discourse and dialogue and exchange and that kind of stuff, um, it's interesting to to have the dialogue be something that needs to be unpacked. So even words in the in my bio and stuff like that should be mm -hmm. things for people to to consider. You know, right, right. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you know, you also mentioned in there that some great people by the name of Edmund Moxie, Pat Raman, Jackson Burnside, and some others that you didn't highlight, but I know who you would be referencing, um, indicated that yourself and others. And the direct words is that your generation are developing, are, not is, not will, are developing a creative economy in which the cultural riches of the Bahamas are celebrated and recognized as commercially and economically viable and valuable globally um, and so forth. That's very powerful for people of their elk in their generation to be saying that about the generation that come after them and what they saw in the generation and what you all are able to do creatively. You want to speak to that a little bit? Yes. I mean, <clears throat> to me, it's like, um, I like to think about everything as like a metaphor, right? It just helps my, helps my, helps my simple brain kind of, kind <laughs> of, uh, 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 
understand things better. I see it like a like a like a bicycle chain, right? There's like mm -hmm. links in the chain, um, and I think you know one of the things that's very important to me is that you, you recognize how important the opportunities are that you are given. Something above gives you an opportunity. You 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 recognize that you have. You know, I don't want to make it sound too dramatic and say, "Oh, you have a mm -hmm. purpose on on the planet." Um, I don't want it to be dramatic, but you do have a purpose on the planet. And you, mm -hmm. I, you, if you really kind of sit down and meditate and think about what, um, think about what opportunities you have, I think you realize that you're given, you're given an opportunity to do something with the time right. that you have. And for me, it doesn't start from zero. Like I'm looking, I'm very, very much aware of, of what I'm, I feel most comfortable at what I'm engaged uh, most by uh, and what I'm good at. And I, I try to like take the, take, take those elements and put them together. But what I do recognize is that I have to look at the history. I have to look mm -hmm. at the conversation. I'm not starting any new conversation. These people have been doing these things. Edmund Moxie had Jumbe village and stuff. Right. That was 60 years ago, whatever it was, maybe not 60, but uh, right. Or maybe 60 years ago, um, Almost. So those, uh, those platforms are not dissimilar from anything that I would have done. And people say, Oh, well, you know, John Cox did that thing or the next thing, but I'm just looking at these structures and just trying to say like, kind of like we need to update. We just need to update these, these ideas along the way that mm -hmm. makes them relevant to the culture. Uh, to the time that the culture is in, because it does evolve. And I do think that we have to, I'm pro evolution. Mm -hmm. that, that's the dis, that's the discomfort I'm always talking about. Like, you know, always want to do something different and let's reimagine this and push this away. Or maybe some parts of this we don't need to think about anymore, but let's take something away and add something to it. Um, yeah, man, I think it's, it's about, it's about being aware of your history and being able to participate in a dialogue that is, um, going to contribute to the future. So hopefully someone will come along after you and do it better than you. That's the whole point, right? Right, right. Or better or different or more appropriate, right. whatever. You know, not mm, necessarily yeah. better. Because I don't think I'm doing anything better than Edmund Moxie. I just think that I look at him, I look at Jackson, I look at all these other folks and listen to the things they say and say, huh, oh, these are all ingredients for what I do. Well, I'll tell you what a Coach of mine said, um, Coach Frazier from um, University of Miami, Mm -hmm. He said, you know, that there's nothing new under the sun, but it's your fingerprints that you put on it that makes a difference in the impact on people. Right. And so you could be as mild and, and meek and kind as you want. Um, people see you in a very high esteem way that some of those persons may not see those who came before you in the same way. Mm -hmm. Not saying that they're not that way because they are people who follow them also. Right. But um, I wouldn't take away from yourself and what you have accomplished and impacting lives in this here Bahama land, right? Now, you are a born free, right? One of the few, um, I shouldn't say a few because you're becoming now almost the majority or you all are the majority in the Bahamas at this point in time. I think you're already cut over. That's the independence babies and beyond on the new right? One, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So I, I think you all... Came we're over the to, over the hump yeah, already, we're but we're about to be fifty. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, it's it's the generations that make up the most of our electorate right now. Right, of the um, population. So yeah, so from that perspective and whatever else. So when we look at that, then and we see that we have um, these great people talking about your generation in such high esteem. Um, how much of an impact has such on the generation to cause you all to have a motor to keep going? Because we hear about all these stories with the youth don't want to do this and what have you. And I'm, I'm still calling you youth because it's still relative. Everything is relative, right? And, right. Um, but you all keep going and you all just keep prowling and prowling and there isn't barriers that stop you all. You just find a way to keep going. And I'm sure that something is inspiring that. I don't know. I mean, I think I think what it is is I know the younger generate the, the you know like the millennials that we talk about now. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody talks about millennials, and you know sometimes not so favorable. Um, you know, and I think the difference between 
I, I you know, forgive me because I don't have all the generations broken down, but mm -hmm. like my generation of people, the the nineteen seventy early nineteen seventies, born in that era, I think that we were born like like the late the the early seventies, early eighties, were just like on mm -hmm. the cusp of what we kind of understand as like old fashionedness now, right? Right. Um, I mean, my children who are born with like iPads and swiping phones and all that kind of stuff like that, like that's a very different way of seeing the world. And I think right. that um, for people in my generation, there's like an equal balance of, yeah, we used to play basketball on the street and go run in the bush and do physical things because TV used to only come on at five o'clock in the afternoon and it only was on for two hours of the day. And you didn't really have this kind of like all these um, I don't want to call them gadgets. We all gadgets. Just, you had to be, there was a kind of a, an emotive kind of way of being in the, in when we were young, which I think informed something, but then we're also not that old that the modern gadget world, as you put it, um, mm -hmm. the, that way of thinking. So I think it's like this cocktail of the old and the new that sits in the generation of people who are my age who mm -hmm. kind of have the old school rigor of like saying, well, man, you got to like, you got to push through this thing. This thing is difficult. There's a way of kind of connecting with people um, with a broader range of people. Um, whereas, to, whereas younger people have a, a slightly different, and I'm not being critical because I like to say mm -hmm. a while ago that I feel like all my mentors are people who are younger than me, but it's, which, I mean, I don't even know if you could have a mentor that's younger than me, but a younger you than I, I kind of think that I, I would like to think of the people who I look up to are people who are, are very young and doing inspirational things. Um, um, but I think it's just a combination of looking at, you know, growing up, having a slingshot mm -hmm. in the bush and, and doing and making bow and hours out of like, you know, trees and, and pieces of string and flying kites. Um, and also now being a more like tech driven kind of person that is, you know, very uh, 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 kind of uh, uh, modern and thinking um, is the perfect cocktail, I think, that makes our generation kind of connect with people. You know? Yeah. And so uh, and, uh, with that in mind, then, um, is it important for persons to latch onto a suite of individuals um, who have performed excellently? or are excellent in what they do and aspire to be like, or not like them, not as in duplicates, but to be able to, to, to function in, a, in an excellent manner like they do. Is that something that is critical for success? I, I think, I mean, it's, it's a, yes, a, my opinion, yeah, my opinion is yes. I feel that if you, as much as you can look into your community, um, it's always very important for me. It, it's important to see yourself mm -hmm. in a successful role, see aspects of yourself embedded in the success okay. of people who really inspire you. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the great things about uh, where we are now. You talked about generations before, but where we are now, there's so many examples of excellence and innovation and creativity and just resilience and and kind of um you know just uh, uh participating in a dialogue that goes so much beyond you know uh the country goes beyond the region just goes into this international space i think so many there's so many uh people in the country that that really speak confidence uh and expose their complexity and expose their um, their ideas in a way that, uh, yeah, it's very, very important for you to look at, look at, look at people, um, and kind of recognize that nobody does anything in a vacuum, you know, like nobody, mm -hmm. nobody does anything, uh, meaningful that doesn't recognize where his or her, uh, where the context of what they are coming from is um, right. you know, very very provocative people and people who you know who their whole their whole mo is to provoke people and to kind of create uh to stir it up and whatever but i i firmly believe that um we are only as good as the community and the platforms that you work within are mm -hmm. you, 
you 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 can i mean you might not know who these people are you may only know about the the, the famous person but you don't know about the 10 people around who made that person believe they, that they can do right. what they do and that's okay. very very important awesome awesome so now that that talks a little bit about your your creative part of the bio but i mean we can't dismiss completely that your legacy part of the bio because I know you two have been like to follow me and sometimes I think you follow me too much because you decided that you wasn't going to pay attention in school as much as you should have paid attention in school in high school, uh, which I didn't pay attention at all. But um, And so a lot of people were saying how which you all were going to come up and make yourself into. And you, you have gone a journey, a colorful journey that has taken you through becoming this rainmaker today where you've gone through the um, yeah, up to the NAGB as the chief um, curator, um, and then you went up to your, yourself, your business, um, pop-up studios, and then Bahamas um, borrowed you. I was going to say stole, but they borrowed you because you still have greater things to do after Bahama. And that $3.5 billion entity made you their creative director okay. and you've done a lot of things at Bahama with creating particularly all those thousands and thousands of art throughout the complex and culture etc but Rosewood is now honored you with a special honor I think they call it a pacemaker and, um, placemaker placemaker right yeah. which is even bigger um, so <laughs> Tell us, how, how does that make you feel, considering some people were saying that you weren't going to mount to nothing when you was in high school? Right. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't really think about the two things at the same time, but um, <laughs> certainly, certainly the high school thing, I have thoughts on traditional education, that is for sure. Even in my 50-year-old body, um, I mm -hmm. still look back at school and go, whoa, yeah, we need to be rethinking that, because um, that mm -hmm. might be the root of a lot of challenges we have, but I'm not on the show to talk about that today. Right, um, right. Placemaker, I am very, very honored and humbled to be uh, recognized as a placemaker for the Rosewood brand of hotels. Um, it's not anything that you like, that you actively uh, position yourself for. It's something mm -hmm. that um, through observation, uh, somebody nominates you to be a placemaker. And so mm -hmm. just for context, so the, so the Rosewood brand I'm not sure the exact number of hotels that Rosewood has globally, but I think it's somewhere in the ballpark of like 40 or 50. So it's not a, it's not a huge, huge brand. It's extreme right. luxury boutique hotels or whatever around the world. Um, and the placemaker program is given to individuals that they think have significantly contributed to the ethos of a particular hotel in a particular community culture. And it's about people who bring the culture into the into the experience of that hotel because for Rosewood, their um, uh, mantra is sense of place. So mm -hmm. wherever the hotel is, no two of them look alike. That's not like, a, and forgive me, I don't mean any disrespect to Starbucks, but when you go to Starbucks, like all Starbucks gonna look the same, right? right. The Rosewood hotels don't look the same at all. Mm -hmm. They look very, very different. And um, so I was nominated by somebody who's a director of sales and marketing uh, who doesn't work here. They work in uh, an office in the States, but I had some interaction with them and they nominated me and that nomination needed to be vetted by the uh, headquarters of Rosewood, which is, um, uh, I think they have two headquarters. The main one is in Hong Kong and then they have the headquarters in Dallas, I believe. And so it had needed to be vetted by the ownership group. Right. And, um, then I was told, oh, you got accepted to be a placemaker. And I was like, oh, wow, that's very interesting. You know, I mean, I had to know, I had to know that I had made it through the phases. Right. But I didn't know ultimately what was going to happen. And so here we are. So I'm yeah. very, very appreciative of that. Well, that, that's, that's great. That's great. Because, you know, um, when we look at this, all this is telling me is that you found your niche. And you didn't seek out that award. Um, like many people go for certificates and this and that and the other. That's something that people recognize you for what you did and what you, how you, what you put to the table and so forth. And then they recommended you. So awesome. And Thank so, you very much. 
that tells me a little bit about those powerful words that you have in the bio when we talk about sovereign and um, independence and the like. Um, so finding your niche, it, are those, those words important in finding a niche? Being sovereign, being independent, being activist. Um, because you, you found your niche, obviously, from high school to now, and right. you're making waves, right? I mean, I'm just, I'm doing the best I can, right? So I, my daughter said something to me very, very interesting, you know, like out of the mouths of babes. She said something to me when she was quite small, like years ago. And she said, Daddy, if you're very good at something, does that mean that that's what you are? Um, and I thought, if if, if you are very good at something, does that mean that that's what you are? And I was like, wow, like, I don't even know how to respond to that. And, um, and I, I didn't really know what to say to her. I said, boy, but it's something that's stuck with me for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, if you are blessed enough and you are lucky, you get to do what you are good at. And if you're very, mm -hmm. very lucky, you're interested in what you get to do. And if that thing that, we, that you get to do is what you are very good at, you're very, yeah. very lucky. Because a lot yeah. of people don't have that, the the chips don't line up that way. They do things yeah. that they feel like they have to do because they have a family or they have the next thing. And then what their interest is, is always this thing lingering in the back, right? Oh, when I get free, I'll do it when I do the next thing. So to your point about, the words are in my bio. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really sit around thinking about, oh, I'm making waves or whatever, but I do think that I'm very lucky and very blessed that I'm very passionate about what I do. The work is very difficult. It's like, you know, I always say I like to use metaphors. It, it's like I see what I'm trying to do with the creative community along with the creative community is like turning a ship around in the harbor. And you see right. these big, big cruise ships and then you see the tugboats like pushing the ships around, like to spin it around so they could back into the back into the um, uh, to to, to uh, dock these huge ships. And sometimes ships have the, the motors that do it, but it's something that is is not an overnight thing. And you know, for me, just as a as a as a simple idea of what I'm trying to do is that trying mm -hmm. to inform the definition of who we are as Bahamians because I'm. I'm very, very proud of my country. I'm very, very proud of all the accomplishments of all the people um, 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 that do amazing things here. And I feel like we deserve to be a part of a global conversation um, because because we do, because we are valid and we are we are interesting and we're complex and we're uh, a, a diverse uh, set of people. And I think through creativity, um, we probably best defined through culture, art, and creativity, the arts, mm -hmm. we, it, 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 in my opinion, is probably the most uh, efficient and honest way to describe any set of people anywhere in the world. Look at the culture mm -hmm. of, a, right. of a place and look at, look at how the people behave. Look at, how, look at what the artists do. Look at what the musicians sing about, what they write about, how, the, how they play, what the poets are saying, what the artists are painting. Uh, just look at it, right? And and, and you can kind of see um, a strength in the people. And I think that um, as Bahamians, uh, we have a strength that we don't even recognize the fullness of the strength yet. And so mm -hmm. we need to agitate for people to understand like, hey, you are a part of this conversation. There is a seat at the table for you to sit at and you need right. to step into that seat and and. and, and and participate and the arts to me are the best vehicle to kind of do that right okay and so you, you mentioned a number of times um community and pop-ups was pretty much a community center mm -hmm. um and and all intents and purposes and you do everything by community um from from time i could tell even before you became the great john cox but when we look at that then how does or what does it mean for the community, artist community, to be honored by Rosewood in this manner? Um, because it's not, like you always mention, it's not just you. It's a whole community right. effort. And so they are recognized in the community efforts in all intents and purposes. Right. So yeah. How does the, the community receive them? 
Um, I think you're very, you're, you're exactly right, right? So none of what I'm doing, I could do without the body of people that I, that I work with, right? I think I recognize how important that, that, that this community is one word, community is one idea, which um, is, is pivotal. The other word I like to use is platform, right? Okay. Like, mm -hmm. it's like you, the, the community, I, I cannot do anything. I have partnerships. We have all these artists. We have 112, 120 works on display at Rosewood. Most of them are on loan from a major collector. You know, they're yeah. from about 50 different artists. Um, so I could go through and name all the artists that we have Max Taylor, we have Terry Lamar, we have Brent Malone, we have Dave Smith. I mean, it just goes on mm. and on. Tessa Whitehead and so on and so forth. Melissa Alcina, Kendall Hanna. Um, and so every one of those people is such a power, a powerful story. Is is They represent such a powerful story that the mm -hmm. combination of of these things just being symbolically there, you know, to me, mm -hmm. I don't like, I like to curate in a way that it, it's, it's, we built, right? So like whatever you see and you ask me to explain or to, to, to talk or tell you a story about Kendall Hanna or tell you a story about Heino Schmidt or tell you a story about Blake Fox or Antonius Roberts or whomever is on display there, I, I, you know, I could, I could just go on and on and on. So it's such a strong cast of characters that, for me, I think people can tell when you, when you do your job, when you're passionate about what you do. There's something right. about how you do it. I'm not like reciting some PowerPoint presentation that somebody told me to say to people, right? Like right, this right. is how I am, right? So this is, mm. you know, and I have to beg the forgiveness of people because I don't like, I don't like that type of, I don't like. I can tell when somebody's reading me a PowerPoint presentation. Like I want to know right, what right. saying. So, you know, I'm only the sum of the parts, right? I mean, so I have a lot of partnerships and I feel like any recognition that I have received or have or may get in the future is really just about those types of things. That's what Pop-Up Studios taught me. That's what working at COB in the late 90s taught me. Mm -hmm. Like when I recognized that the platform that the classroom was a platform, you know, right, there's right. a field on top of which, you know, the most amazing Super Bowl games as you watch it, they're played on a field, <laughs> you know, and right, somebody, right. Had to, somebody had to maintain that field, right? And so we're creating a field for great things to happen, right? And right, so right. That's, that's what we're trying to do. And maybe Rosewood is another one of those fields, you know? Yeah, we'll be coming up on to, to commercial break, but before we do that then, let's just touch on this, um, Jackson Burnside um, made some a powerful, um, I don't know you call it a, a, a vision or, or whatever you want to call it. But um, it says that, uh, he said that um, by the year 2020, more persons will travel to the Bahamas for its art, culture, and heritage rather than for its sun, sand, and sea. Now, you mentioned the... the some names just now, and Mr. Hannah, Kendall Hannah, has some very powerful pieces um, in front of the convention or in the convention center. I don't know if he has other pieces in other places. But when we look at that then, is this a part of the whole fulfilling of this prophecy? That's the word I was looking for that he, he would have mentioned and so forth. Yes, I from, mean from that perspective. Yeah, yeah Jackson's Jackson's um, uh, vision and his kind of premonition that this would happen um, is is I think what drives uh, me. It what is what drives my team. You know, I have a team mm -hmm. filled with cre uh, local creatives who have yeah. helped me. I mean, I've had people been in and on the team and moved on to do amazing things. Um, but I think that really what we're trying to do is is fulfill this vision. I mean, twenty twenty obviously has passed. 2020 right. was a very interesting year, but I don't, I don't think we should be caught up on literally the interpreting this right. thing. Um, we, what we are trying to do is, to me, this, how I kind of interpret this is, you know, we're talking about updating the culture. We're talking about, like, uh, in dynamic and honest and, and, and just, you know, kind of uh, compelling and expansive ways defining who we are as Bahamians. And I right. think that, as I mentioned before, the arts and culture 
and the heritage do that better than anything else. Uh, and, and, and arguably, they do them not in a way that that undermines or diminishes the sun tendency, because that's just the raw, that's the part of the platform that that's here, right? That's right. stunning. But I think that we need to make sure that we are always, um, when we peel back those layers of paradise, we recognize the complexity and the beauty of the people and the intelligence of the people who are here and operating on so many different levels. And I think that's really what Jackson was, was getting at. Um, and so I think it's a lifelong pursuit to kind of do this because we do, we need to, we need to think about it. Right. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we need to, um, you know, I, I know we have to go to a break, but I mean, I'm, I, I always say, you know, to people when I'm giving them a tour here, I started off and I say, if I go to some random place in the world and there's a hundred people in the room, and I say, have you ever been to the Bahamas? Or what can you tell me about the Bahamas? Probably 93, 94, 95 of those people are going to say, oh, I was on a cruise there. Or I went on vacation. Right. There, or I went to my sister's wedding there. It's going to be something that drives them to be there in some kind of whimsical um, service industry context. Some of them are the right. doctors. Oh, I'm doing research for the doctor. I'm to have a banking thing going on. But the majority of the people are going to be on that highway. And right. so... That highway, as we progress as artists, is not often the the, the 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 it's not often the thing that celebrates the complexity of the arts. It has not mm. been that thing. I'm not a big, I don't I don't like to criticize things. Yeah. I have a friend. Well, that, that, who, you know, that's yeah. fine because we can drill into that We're a little bit go, after, after, after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So. You've been listening to something to think about with Dale Happy Knowles, and we're here with John Cox, the great one. And we're talking about how smelling the excellence is all available for all of us. And so once we rise to that higher height, then the whole country will rise and we will all be sitting on the beach with our little cabana. We'll be right back. Sammy's Chicken. There's nothing like it. Behind every scoop, lick, and savor is a smile and memory being made or reminisced. Whether you're at work, out with family on a Sunday, or have friends visiting, flavor will meet expectations in our 32-ounce container for only $10 if you're having a special event as well. Exotic flavors ranging from sour soft to Guinness is definitely worthwhile. Welcome back to Something to Think About with Dale Happy Nose. We're here with John Cox talking about how smelling excellence in Rosewood will help us all evolve. Welcome back, John. Thank you. Welcome. Happy to be here. Good. So as we're talking a little bit about the work in the show and the impact of going to an art and um, culture and heritage draw in the Bahamas, um, I believe that there's, we are 
sitting on a hundred billion dollar economy. When the pillars of that economy is sun, sand, sea, people and digital. And people and the people I have in there, the the orange um, economy, the creatives, etc., and all of the other things that go along with people and and development of people and so forth. And so when when we look at that, uh, we see what Jackson Burnside has said, and we we have to ask them: um, Can art, culture, and heritage be the major component um, for that? that uh, economy, that $100 billion economy. And then is it Charlestown, Charlestown right. or Nassau, um, the magnet that we could create for that to happen? Yes. I mean, so let me start with the back. But I mean, Charlestown is definitely a beautiful scenario, right? Okay. Um, I do think that it could go beyond that. But Charlestown is definitely a good – is a good um, – Start there's, there's a lot of infrastructure that's already there, right? That makes that an interesting space. Um, you know, I think that the arts, going back to the first thing that you said um, about the people and the creatives and the orange economy and all that kind of stuff, I think mm-hmm. that that what you what you are noticing is in all aspects of life the most creative people in whichever field they are in are the most successful ones, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you're in medicine, whether you're in law, whether you're in business, whether you're in technology, whether you're, whether you're in uh, this new metaverse world of, of things, Mm -hmm. the digital modern world. um, Mm -hmm. Those people who are the most creative are the ones who make, who create the paradigm shift. Um, and so having said that, I reinforce what Jackson said about art, culture, and heritage. Those mm-hmm. people who understand those aspects of things tend to be the ones who make inroads in their practice and what they do and right. make the, the greatest, um, the greatest kind of, uh, uh, contributions. Like I've always thought, like I'm not a political person at all, at all, at all, but I've mm-hmm. always thought in every ministry, there probably should be a sub ministry of culture in every mm-hmm. ministry because okay. it's how, how, how you get the work done. Right. right. Because right. Like you say, it's about the people. It's about culture is culture. Culture is, it is what it is. Right. Um, it is, it is historical. It is, uh, transactional. It is immediate. It's about what happens today. It's about what happened yesterday. It's about what people are thinking. It's not necessarily, oh, uh, I, I disagree with what people are thinking. So culture is only the stuff that I agree with. Right. right. Culture, culture mm-hmm. is what is the whole thing, right? So even uh, what somebody said something really interesting the other day on a podcast I was listening to about like the gods, right? They use this term, the gods, and they said, you know, you have these like these very bright and enlightened gods, but you also have these dark gods. And they said, you know, mm. people think that they can only learn things from the from the bright and enlightened gods, but not the dark ones. And they said, you know, the ones who are really wise recognize that all of these scenarios are helping inform how you become a true and more honest person. And I think with right. the creatives, the, 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 with the creativity, what it does is it helps us tell, it helps us see ourselves in a much more complex um powerful validating way that fits fits our stories into the complexity of stories that are told all over the world and makes us feel more confident about what we're doing um not arrogant but confident um and be able to kind of push push forward you know like Mm -hmm. i i think that that's that's really really an important thing and when we look at you know I don't know. I just think it's about it's about appreciating the wholeness of people, not just not just you know what grades did you get in school and how much money did you make or all these other things like that. It's it's different. There's things about um, who we are and what we do and how we do it and how we pay attention to things which are very very important. Um, and those are things that are starting to become more evident um, and people pay more attention. Yeah, I think people and generally seem to get um, overflustered by money. Yeah, we all need money to live, but I mean, 
Um, it could also cost you to kill yourself if you only focus on money, on making money, True. and not live in the process. So how do you enjoy the money when you get it, or whilst you're getting it, right? And so in the Caribbean, um, we've observed over the years traveling where they are very creative in producing products from the natural things um, that is found about them, whether it's the coconuts or whatever. Um, they, they, they'll make a million and one different products out of one coconut, um, where we seem not to have done that in the past um, and so forth. So are we now um, looking to create incubators or an entry pot so that we could maximize all of the artistic, creative persons in the country so that we could then build this $100 billion economy? through the yeah. things that you talked about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we still have ways to go with that. What I'm noticing is I'm seeing more innovation in food and beverage at the moment okay. than I am in the visual arts. I mean, certainly I can only, I don't want to speak outside of my yeah, portfolio, so to speak. But what I notice is that I see like little companies popping up here and there, even if it's like, you know, making healthy drinks or just like reimagining like food products and how these things work um, and how we have access to them. I mean, one of the things with COVID, and we know we've been through COVID, COVID really kind of like shifted the, the, the sand beneath our feet with how people right. who were going to get stuff done had to get it done. Um, and it's just really interesting. You see these like little smaller platforms of just people eating things and just having new takes on Bahamian food, but having like a modern, more healthy twist on things like that. And it just makes me go like, wow, like you see all these like successful people who are making good business sense out of, out of food and beverage. Um, you know, visual artists have always had the reputation that, oh, visual artists make all this money and because right. you're selling plastic things, right? You're, you're, you're transactional. Like it's like, if I give you a painting, you give me money. Uh, much mm -hmm. more hard, much more difficult for musicians, right? Right. Are you you playing the guitar for me when I could, you know, listen to it online or whatever? Um, right. But I think we're getting there. I'm happy. I think we have to keep pushing. And again, it's about platforms. I mean, we have the straw market downtown. Mm -hmm. You know, if I, if I might say so myself, I, I think that there's a lot of extremely talented people in the straw market doing things. But I think there needs to be a push. People need to be challenged in order to be right. great. You need to be challenged. And I feel mm -hmm. like sometimes there's not enough of a challenge there. Um, and I think you have to be careful about how we measure the success of things. You have to be, it's not just about what people expect to get. It's not just about giving people what they expect. Mm -hmm. Because they might not expect the highest level or the most innovative things because they have a very low standard or expectation. Right, of what right. they're do. So I think that we're on the verge of a lot of, or we have huge potential for people to explore the possibilities of the material that are, um, if you want to use the word indigenous, the, or if you want to just say that we have great access to, uh, to imagine that. I think uh, the fashion world, the apparel world, um, industrial design, um, I think we really need to be thinking, thinking about those, thinking about those uh, possibilities. Um, Mm -hmm. And that means that we need to get out. So we need to we need to collaborate a little bit. I mean, I think, you know, I'm I'm very. Uh, there's an American designer who passed away recently. This guy called Virgil Abloh, who's just really got a very interesting background. Um, and I'm listening to a lot of his podcasts and listening to interviews with him. And just like how we have to just think about how we can get things done and not get so bogged down in being so competitive with one another, you know, I just like kind of recognize our own genius. And that was one of the things I was lucky enough to be able to work with Jackson quite a bit before he passed mm -hmm. away. And he, we were trying to get the designation to be a creative city of design. Right. In the first instance, we ended up being a creative city of folk art and craft. Uh, and, and he actually passed away before we got the designation, but right. um, he would always say the Bahamians have this like innovative way of doing everything but they kind of downplay it themselves. Like they don't right. think it's, they don't think it's sophisticated or they don't think, Oh, this is just me doing this other thing. And it's like, no, this is a whole way of, of, of solving problems. And we need to be able to kind of like believe in that and start to innovate 
and build real industry out of those things. And I think that's where we're going to hit those billion dollar numbers that you're talking about. Um, yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't expect the billion dollars to come today, but I'm talking about working and building an intentional environment towards yeah. that, right? What yeah. I call the new built environment. Yeah. Not this um, new normal, which to me is going to take us back where we was before. So when we looked at the commercials just now, the second commercial was from um, um, Bunny Purple um, Company. She is now not too long out of high school, and she has a company that is using the flavors and adapted into ice cream and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so the market is, or the spectrum is huge for people to play in this um green economy, um, orange economy, and so forth, and to be able to, uh, some of the economies overlap, to tell you the truth. But, um, you know, but when Dominic was in, um, at SAIC, uh, I observed this artist sitting in the room after a talk, and when people came out of the room, he went and picked up all of the waste stuff that was in the room, and some of the other scrap material and, and in the room and when we came back probably about half an hour hour later he had this um beautiful costume made um i call it a costume because i wouldn't wear it nowhere but it it people could ladies could actually wear it out for a dinner thing and they said that that's just how he thinks he just goes in the room he sees things and two seconds later he's i think mr han is similar to that too but um so how do we leverage that type of mentality and get that into more of our people seeing that you're saying that they're saying that we have the skills, but we may not have the confidence. I think that's the word that we could probably apply to it. Yeah, I think we just need to we need to reimagine the systems of of intelligence, right? I mean, I think if we're going back to education or I will touch on education a little bit. You know, there's mm-hmm. a, a famous educator called Howard Gardner um, who had this concept called multiple intelligences, right? And he talked about, like, I don't remember all of them, but I think I think there was in the beginning, maybe there was like seven or eight, but then they expanded it to be, be more like people who learn visually or spatially or through sound right. or, okay. or whatever. Yeah. And it was just basically um, different ways of people learning um, and expressing and functioning. And I think that we need to challenge the system that we push kids through to validate their position or their place in just a local community, but also in a broader, a broader dialogue, um, right. a, broad, a, broad, a broader space, if you will. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's a lot happy for us to unpack, but I mean, I think we really just need to understand. I mean, I have a child, I have two children who couldn't be any more different academically. Uh, and mm-hmm. I have one, one who feels a lot like how I was in school. And I, I look back at school and go like, wow, that was, that was just a, <laughs> a hurdle to get over. Like, I mean, I think the only thing good about that is I think I could look at it and go. You'd finish. I, I finished it and mm-hmm. I survived. And I guess that built a certain type of strength um, because it didn't, feel relevant then and i'm not sure it was relevant now like i still don't think so um but we're still doing it though right and mm-hmm. i still think that people people when you talk about the student or whoever it was when you were observing a talk and the person went and picked up waste material and did something that's a way of thinking about things and i think that um and what's encouraging to me is that more and more i think people are paying attention to that right. type of thinking to me, in the Howard Gardner context, that's that's a broader sense of intelligence, right? It's kind of going like, how do we how do we do this? I mean, when we watch like the SpaceX things with Elon Musk, and Musk, I know he's quite a controversial character, but you just think about it and you just go like, wow! Like, think of all the waste there was created when they would send vessels into space and all the fuselage right. would break off and just like all this stuff would just fall back into the ocean. And, you know, he's like saying, no, no, we can bring these things right back. Almost, I think, the last SpaceX exercise when they were like landing some of those pods back onto these platforms just beautifully mm-hmm. so they could reuse them. I was almost right. more impressed with that than I was with the people <laughs> going into space. Going up. Right? But like, yeah. that's actually really interesting that they made all these things or people making fabric out of 
or shoes out of uh, plastic in the ocean or all these right. things I just think gets to be so interesting. And I feel like we just have so many um, resources here. I mean, that's one of the things that we're going to be doing in my job um, is thinking about all the waste that comes out of a, a big, big resort. How can we repurpose that, create another platform that is just all about repurposing, recycling material, but not just right. in a way that we've taken junk and we're making more junk out of the junk. How do we make utilitarian things out of that in a way that uh, uh, makes us see the creativity in, in right, that, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that once we start to do that, and if we could just leave people alone a little bit and, and, and imagine that there's people who think not like how we think, I think the world and this local community would get a lot more interesting and mm -hmm. we'll start to see more people succeeding and people will then see people like themselves doing interesting things and they'll go like, Hey, uh, this person has started a tea company. I could start a tea company or this person started making furniture. I could start mm -hmm. making furniture or this person's making uh, uh, whatever it is. I have a, I have a more innovative way to deliver food locally. Yeah, right. I can do that. Right. Gonna, so, uh, you know, and then why not start to export that? You know, right, these right. ideas that we have are not just good for good for people who are from the Bahamas. A good idea is a good idea. You right, know, right. In, in North America and right. in, in South America, people start saying, hey, this guy in the Bahamas started to do it this way. What if we started to export our ideas? You know? Yeah. And um, exporting creates wealth too, um, compared right. to just importing all the time. So when we look at it, all of this now, how are the developments? in the creative community helping to contribute for making art, culture, and heritage um, come alive as being the, the prominent focus. Um, you mean like the institutions, you mean? Like those? Whether, whether it's institutions, whether it's the artists, um, programs that they have themselves, or, yeah. or it might be some of the heritage things. Because, I mean, we have a lot of heritage that we're not even touching on. I mean, I wouldn't even touch on the Christopher Columbus to do because I think that it's almost a billion dollar industry by itself, just the name, right? right? But we, we're not touching on, on things like that. But I'm just talking about in the creative space. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of... When you came home from school, there was only a few. Um, you, you had the traditional ones who were doing the Ponciana trees and... All these other things, but now you have people doing a whole scope of different flavors of art. Let me call it flavors, seeing that um, when you put ice cream in my head. Um. <laughs> yeah, um, I listen. I think that you know, I think that the institute. I'm going to go back to institutions because I think it's important for us to do for us to do that. Institutions okay. are just made up of people, um, but I think that the steps we need to Institutions need to help create platforms to give people opportunities and enable them, enable them to, 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 to explore, to experiment, to kind of come up with methods and mm -hmm. ways of solving these problems that we have. Um, when I say problems, I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean like right. in, the, in the context of like innovation. Um, right. And how we do that is I think we need to start getting interesting. I mean, there's platforms that could probably – participate in this that have no idea, right? You can't just say, oh, the NAGB is going to solve all of the creative problems, right? Because that's just not what's going to happen. The Diagola Foundation is not going to solve all of them. COB is not, right. isn't going to solve all of them. We, we need to start kind of lacing. I almost see it as like eyelets in a, in a shoe. Or we are like lacing this, the, like all okay. these eyelets are like different institutions and we're like tying one shoe together in a way right. that makes... That, that, that carves canals from one from one body of water to another body of water, which I think mm -hmm. previously, you know, had not had any connection, right? It, that's the that's the thing. Like when you look at it, like oftentimes as people are want to want to bring like new ideas to the platform, and you recognize when you really explore that these things already exist. Shakespeare in Paradise exists, right? Mm -hmm. Nassau Music Society exists. Um, you know, the NAGB exists already. Now there's these new commercial galleries and all this other stuff, which I think is really interesting for artists, not just mm -hmm. visual artists, but visual artists are getting the experience here to really explore what is a market value, right? What is right. what is truly your value? How do you 
manage your business? How do you become a professional artist? How do what does that mean? How does one how does one negotiate their own uh, uh, creative practice in a way that makes good sense for them? That mm -hmm. is also responsible and consistent that allows you to build on your business and not just be, you know, kind of uh, uh, highly inconsistent. Um, so I mean, yeah. I think that there's all kinds so, of things to do. Yeah. So we see we see those things um, sort of happening in the financial space. Mm -hmm. With financial space, we have foundations and we have NGOs and they're like who are helping people do business plans and get over the hump business wise and basics and stuff like that. Um, and my my take is that we need stuff like that to happen in the in the creative space, so that the artists who might have all this talent. I mean, I just look at the people, the the brothers in the shack, right? Uh, we look at them every day job and they say oh they're good for nothing this and stuff you put them in the shop and you see all kind of creativity coming out so to me it's just about mentorship and somebody has to come up with the system and i think it's ngos and the like to create spaces where they could shine and then we will then develop everything else will follow but we focus on the money first instead of the creating right. and then let the the creation generate the money or draw the money, right? Yeah, and I think we need to also be patient in the development of things. I was having a conversation with somebody, ironically, earlier today. Um, we were we were looking at um, one of the forts, like walking through it in depth and saying, boy, okay. this, is, this has so much potential. And I said, you know, well, I said, these spaces need to be curated. I mm -hmm. said, these spaces really need to be curated. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that they're not, Right. But I'm also saying that they need to be curated, right? I mean, yeah, the we raised, need, raised the bar. Yeah. We, need to, we, we look at them and go just like, wow, this is unbelievable what is here. Like, how can we make this an experience that is sustainable? How can we create right. a, 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 an inroad into the space? And this goes back to what I was saying before about Jackson art and culture and all these other things. It's not about like, oh, I work in Bahamar, so I'm trying to say everybody should come to Bahamar because that's where the art is. That's not the no. idea at all. It's that we're right. spawning all of these things that are happening and we could create this complex network of districts and 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 cities and 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 and, and just con uh, uh, systems of connection that will cause people to associate certain types of experiences with the Bahamas that they don't normally do now um, right you know and to your point those guys in the shack those people who are making their switcher and doing whatever, there's ways to, 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 to bring that stuff into like a contemporary way of thinking that really is a business minded way for people to just, um, like you say, not just make a living, but to kind of validate their own existence in, 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 in spaces. And we have so much stuff. There's so many stories to tell. Uh, the landscape is just ripe. It's like a seed, like waiting mm -hmm. to, like, to, to burst through the horizon into this wonderful uh, kind of uh, fruited plant. Um, and we need to we need to really think about how that works. It's not a one dimensional thing. It's not about oh, I give you a grant. Here's ten thousand dollars. Do something. It needs to be right. ongoing. It needs to continue. One thing needs to lead into another thing. And then we we were creating systems of of leaders who could continue to lead and lead and lead and kind of and make and make things happening. Make things happen. You know. Yeah. So when we when we look at that, then we have the the private sector. Um, has a role to play and then you also have i guess the government should have a role to play in, in creating policy at least at minimum to allow these industries to flourish um so how 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 is that coming along is that something that needs a lot of attention or that's what running now and at the right pace that it needs to run um, I don't necessarily think, I think the private sector part of it is something that probably has more uh, potential at the moment, because I think that you can negotiate in different ways, right? And the private sector does not, it's not unfortunately marred by the political cycle. Um, right. Okay. Unfortunately, the political cycle is so detrimental to ideas because ideas take time to develop. Right. Um, and they need not be marred by, you know, ego, 
which I think is the which which I think unfortunately um, disrupts the uh, the necessarily uh, growth cycle for a lot of ideas. Okay. So I'll just leave mm -hmm. that alone. But um, yeah. I think mm -hmm. I think that um, there are opportunities to engage the private sector in a way that um, uh, can be more sustainable in the long run for communities to develop. Right? There's foundations. Uh, uh, there's the knowledge of, of institutions and where institutions need help. Um, it's not always money that they need. Sometimes they need uh, ideas. They need right. uh, administrative mm -hmm. framework, right? They need policy um, that kind of helps um, say, oh, yeah, we can do this, or this is an opportunity. They need to be given given an open door to do something, right? So where a place like, uh, like where, like, you know, some of the things we try to do is like where creatives would not normally be able to afford the platform to do what they do we make the platform mm -hmm. free we say well you can, make, you can just do it for free so mm -hmm. here you know i'm not necessarily giving you any money but i'm taking away the money that you'd have to spend to do this thing and you can just go for yourself um right um how do we look back into the community and see how we can how we can how we can um how we can work and then you know i'm i'm an optimist right i think that we need to we need to think about people who are in government in a way that 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 government can be very very helpful it has to be i mean because government mm -hmm. is where policy can be made where laws can be made um, mm -hmm. um that would that would that would enhance things i mean just import duties just opportunities new development having to say every development over x million dollars you know this percent of the overall cost of the of the of the project needs to go towards cultural development whether you embed it into the infrastructure of what the project is, or it's 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 uh it goes into the community, or maybe it's a little bit of both. Um, mm -hmm. And then you you because that's how we have to start thinking about things. You have to stop thinking that art and culture is uh, and heritage is the seasoning that goes on the meat. Art right, and culture right. and heritage is the actual meat. Right, right, right. right? So it, you talked about the youth and in, in the industry and. When I say youth, I mean youth in terms of maturity, of knowing how to do this and how to do that and, and the like and so whether it's sell art, price art, whether it's create certain type of things or whatever it is. Um, what a art exchange help? Um, what do, what I would call it a small to medium, small to medium sized artist, more so than anybody else. To have some sort of structured system where they could place their art and then um, people would be able to see it through a portal or whatever it is and have explanations of it or even virtual yeah. uh, well, I talks think... of it and, and the like so that yes. somebody could guide guide them through it. And particularly, I would think that those out of high school and those who might be trying to figure out what they want to go off to school to do if they can go off to school. Well, this might be a means to get them off the school, right? Right. Yes. I mean, I, so the answer to that is yes. So I do think that um, a dynamic art, you use the term exchange. I think basically what it is, we need to, we need to, we need to understand and work with the emergence of successful commercial galleries, right? Okay. I think basically what we've, what we've had the National Gallery of the Bahamas is somewhat misleading because the National Gallery is actually a museum. It's not right. a, not a it's their their mandate is not is not to sell artwork. So, right. Mm -hmm. It is to promote it to, to, to preserve, to expose, to educate, and so on and so forth. Um, so what we have, we have we have seen the uptick of a very, very high level uh, of art making that, mm -hmm. that lives in a museum type of environment where the return or the the, the 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 measure from which this artwork is most successful is is a critical one right. is one where uh the artwork speaks to history it, it critiques the system it it's it's all of these things um but where the and i like to use the metaphor that the empty adult the empty seat at the adult table mm -hmm. in the local art community is the one 
that has commercial on the name plate that the, 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 the name tag says commercial in the plate right because people right. have a difficult time understanding that that has been something that artists visual artists and other artists have shied away from because if you're commercial mm. or you sold out or you've lost your integrity or you you've watered down your audience too much you have too a broader base of audience that some people who could not possibly understand what your work is are also wanting to buy it you have yeah. that on one side of the pendulum and you have the other side of the pendulum which is people who just sell anything to anybody mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, both of those ideas are not doing justice to the middle which actually right. builds the economy right it's the middle right. way um and i think that we're seeing the emergence of new galleries come on this on the scene um certainly the central bank has been doing a, a great job with uh, exhibitions for years and years but the challenge with the central bank, and I love the central bank, is the central bank is not a commission commission taking space. The central bank is right. not need to sustain itself. Right. right. When you have an entity that needs to sustain itself with collaboration or through collaboration with other creative bodies, a new dynamic exists, which is more consistent with one that is more global and regional. Um, and that's something that we're seeing, and we have the challenge at the current. There's the turn gallery, there's the cab gallery, which is new. And I think artists are having to truly understand uh, their own value, understand their own production, right? I mean, I sometimes will have opportunities for artists and somebody will come and say, I need that artist to do this, this, and this. And I need 500 of them. And the artist mm -hmm. will go, oh my goodness, I can't make 500 of these things. And I'm like, well, you need to think about how you need to make 500 of these things because I can mm -hmm. sell 500. I can't sell the seven that you have, but I can sell 500. And because you don't have 500, we're losing the business and they're going to the guy in Miami or Atlanta or wherever who has 5,000 of them. Right. And we need to like see how we find this middle ground and help cultivate that. That means right. collaborate more. Studio practice becomes a little bit different. Imagining what that 35, 40% commission is inside the number that you imagine your artwork to be. Right. When, you, right. when you think about, I want to buy a Volkswagen, you're not thinking about the cost of the Volkswagen without the overhead and the distributor. You're thinking about what the cost of the Volkswagen is that you're getting from the dealer. And I think right. that the artists have this way, our artists are not thinking through uh, some other things. I mean, this is a, a, we could probably have a series of conversations about this, but you know, I think that we're, we're on a learning curve and the more people start to learn those things, the more sustainable and more robust the community is that we're going to get. But you know who's learning it? These F and B guys who who bring who have these successful the new Duff and all these other kind of ideas. Right. Mm -hmm. These people they're they're getting it. And our visual artists have been successful in other ways before. Need to start understanding some of this like business one hundred and one stuff, but not forget their creativities. Right, right. And, and go from there. And then I think we'll start to see a more sustained things. Artists could be making hundred thousand dollars easy a year if they just mm -hmm. think about it. You know? Uh, how many paintings do I want to sell? Who do I think is my market? Am I gonna sell five twenty thousand dollar paintings? Am I gonna sell two fifty thousand dollar paintings? Am I gonna sell a hundred one thousand dollar paintings or two hundred five hundred dollar paintings? Like and right. how am I gonna get them out? And where am I right. selling them? And do I have a platform? And can I sell them to this guy who is designing something in Los Angeles? Why not? Right. right? And so the digital platform and all these things, this is how we, I mean, it's your, your phone. You probably could do this from your phone, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah. we'll get there. We'll get there. Well, that is, that is very good that we will get there. And I'm glad that you're showing on uh, helping persons out there to see how they could smell excellence coming their way from from the, the Ohuma of Rosewood um, <laughs> yeah. and so forth. And um, folks, um, we're going to wrap up shortly, but if you have any questions that you wanted, I should have asked this earlier um, of John, then please, 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 please do hit him up so that we could get them done um, for you. But as we roll on now, John, how or where do we go from here? Um, we, we now, you are like you say, hitting the halfway mark. And so you've been in, in, in the industry as at least 30 years, people before you. And so now we have another 100 plus years ahead of us that we should be planning for. So how do, how do we guide that? 
Um, how do we inspire what should happen in that direction? Um, happy. I think we need more administrators. I think we need more, more, more systems that are systems that will enable people to find mm -hmm. themselves. Right. I, I, as much as I want to say, we need to have more artists. I don't know that. I don't know that we need more artists. I think artists are going to spawn. Like happen, right? Mm -hmm. Bunny rabbits are just going to. That's going to happen. <laughs> but the problem, the problem is, if you just have more artists and you don't have the platforms or the galleries or the institutions or the business models in order for them to uh, to, mm -hmm. to shine, right? We need to. We need to make the Colosseum. Right, in order for all these gladiators to be awesome, right. right. So, and I think the Col Colosseum is made um, um, with baby steps and with giant leaps. I think that we need to use the big agencies that I have. Like right now, I have big agency around me, um, right. So I need to, to to capitalize on what I can do with the time that I have here. But the person mm -hmm. also who who has you know the street corner. Uh, uh, kiosk also needs right. to recognize that power, and we see. Right. I see it all the time. I see furniture designers, Dan, uh, Daniel Belton, with amazing stuff, making furniture out of cut. You know, um, mm -hmm. cut. Uh, well, welcome uh, to science. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're saying business one hundred and one. Yeah, that that's that's big. Um, I, do we have those in the in the? You taught at UB, um, University of Bahamas, so. Are the artists required to take any business courses? At the moment, when I was teaching, they were not. Mm -hmm. um, I think the one of the well, it was just, no, they're not. I think that a business program, a professional practice program, would probably fit more um, into a four-year program. Unfortunately, okay. UB is still teaching on an associate program. The right. BFA has been something that has been uh, on the books for a while, but um, you can you can take business courses as an elective, right. uh, but you need to be guided. Somebody who is your guidance counselor or whatever needs to be saying, Hey, I would, I would do this, you know, cause right. people think when they're in the art department, all they should be taking is studio classes and, you know, be walking around with paint on their face, um, <laughs> which is probably not a great solution, you know, <laughs> right. Go to go to your business class with the paint on your face and then you probably be the one that's most successful. So yeah, um, I laugh because I saw that actually happen. Um, <laughs> somebody walking around you be with paint on the face. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I think we just need, we just, we need that collaboration. We need that intersection of worlds that, that, that previously are disparate. We need to bring them together. Mm -hmm. Cool. It sounds like we get enough to go for the next hundred years. And so I think we need to be like the Chinese and map it out as much as we can, even though it's a fluid, environment the creative environment and we, and we we encourage the the creativity and because if that's you that creativity is what comes from within and at least that's my imp uh, impression being an engineer um in that space so john what we'd like to do is ask you now if is there anything that you would like to say i mean i know you had a lot to say but is there anything other than what i asked you about that you like to say to the public? Um, I mean, I just want people to stay, stay connected. I mean, that's the thing. I, I, I need as much encouragement, just like every other artist needs as much encouragement as possible. Keep mm -hmm. open minds, you know, like listen, listen to, listen to everybody, you know, give people an opportunity to be there. Listen to those little kids who don't do well in school. You know, you're yeah. a common, common denominator. The people mm -hmm. who do great things, most of them say, oh, you know, I didn't do that well in school. <laughs> you know, think yeah. about that. You know what I mean? Like, I think we, need, think we really, really need to think about that. We make people, we're making people into, like, we're making them extraordinarily mediocre. You know? Making them robots. Right? Yeah. And they live in a life playing, that's not theirs. Yeah. You're playing, you know, you're playing... You're playing the midfield. I know midfielders are important, but you need to, you need to you need to go on the attack. You know what I mean? You need to go on the attack. Or if you can play defense, play defense. But like, come on, like that's make the statement. Don't be afraid to fail. There's not enough failure. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing I have to say. If you ask me yeah, if I have a yeah. parting 
parting uh, parting words. Yeah. Do not be afraid to fail when you're in school. You have to push that. You have to really, like, really push that. I will add that don't be afraid to fail, period, because failure to me is the foundation of success. You can't have success without failure. Exactly. So far. But thank you kindly for joining us this evening and being um, so generous with all your thoughts and ideas and what needs to happen. And, and I know you don't like talking about yourself um, when I press you at the beginning, but <laughs> you know sometimes you just got to do that for the benefit of the people out there. Yeah. And so thank you kindly again, um, everybody out there on um, Facebook, YouTube, and the like. Be sure to, to reach out to John at the current Bahama. If you have ideas that you want to bounce past him, I'm sure he'll be open to receiving them and so forth. Say hello to everybody. Be safe, everybody. Madam Producer, take us away. Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoyed the show? Then subscribe to us for more educational and inspirational content. Ring the bell so you never miss a show. Let's change the narrative, 242.